Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. Today with us we have a very special kind of uh, program. We are going to be looking at Rotary and how it works with local government. And with me today I have Dave Durflinger. He is a uh, Carpenter City Manager and also a member of the Rotary Club of uh, Carpenter. Welcome Dave. Thanks Mike. And we also have Eric Onan who is a past mayor, city council, and a member of the Rotary Club of Goleta. Eric, thank, thank you, you both for joining us. I'm going to start with you, Dave. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit of history. Well, as you said, I am the city manager in Carpinteria. I've been employed by the city for 16 years now. I started out as the community development director in 1999. Before that, I worked for 13 years uh, out in the Coachella Valley by Palm Springs for the city of Cathedral City out there. And my background is in land use planning, so I was a city planner out in Cathedral City. Uh, in Carpinteria, I was hired as the community development director, did that for a couple of years. And it was during that time that I was invited by a council member, Dick Weinberg, former mayor and council member, to join the Rotary Club of Carpinteria. Okay. So uh, since 2000, uh, I've been a member of the Rotary Club of Carpinteria. Um, also around that time, uh, 2001 actually, um, I was promoted to city manager, hired as the city manager, and have really enjoyed that. That's great. Thank you. Eric, how about you? Well, you know what, I, I got to come to this area in, I think it was 1978. I came from the South Bay area, Southern California, came up to go to UCSB, like so many people, I guess, that came to this part of town, um, and uh, fell in love with the area. Um, and of course, by the time I was done with UCSB, I was a transfer student, so I only had a couple of years. I was convinced I had to find some way to stay uh, in the area. And I was fortunate I worked my way through college, so I continued working there, still there today, Country Meat Market and Catering Company. Right, right. That's how I worked my way through college, continued working there, eventually started our business. Uh, we opened business in 1983, the Santa Barbara Airbus. My wife and I and my partner, Mark, Mark Klopstein, and um, have grown that business, you know, from a total bootstrap startup. <laughs> Um, to, you know, today a significant company, about 60 people uh, involved in the company. Um, and I joined Rotary in 1986, yeah. so not very long after I um, started uh, the business that I got involved with Rotary. Great. Well, thank you for that. Uh, that's <laughs> quite a bit of history, at least locally. Um, Dave, tell us a little bit about your, uh, your Rotary background. Um, as far as what you've done, I know you're past president of the Rotary Club of Carpinteria. Yeah, the president 2007 8 uh, had a great year. Uh, um, as, I, as I mentioned, uh, began in 2000, joined the Rotary Club. And at the time, I really didn't know anything about Rotary uh, other than that it was a service club. I wasn't sure if it was a fraternal organization or a <laughs> service club. Um, but it turned out to be a super fit for me at the time, uh, shortly after I transitioned uh, into the city management position. And I really needed to, coming to a new town, small town in particular that Carpentry is, um, to get to know the community and get to know folks. And Rotary was a great way to do that. And being a service organization, of course, it has many connections out in the community. We're always looking at needs and, <laughs> and uh, uh, meeting those needs through service projects. And so it was an excellent way um, as a uh, public agency uh, employee uh, to learn uh, that side of uh, carpentry too through Rotary. Right. Now, how about uh, members? Uh, there must be some members that are also working with you, I would say, as, as far as with the city part. Yeah, um, you know, Rotary is, is one of the great partners in the community. We're fortunate in a small town to have two uh, uh, Rotary uh, clubs in carpentry. Of course, you serve on our uh, elected city council. And um, we've done a number of projects jointly with the Rotary Club over the years, working cooperatively. Uh, the Tomo Park project, uh, one of those projects. Um, they've helped us fund um, uh, accessibility uh, projects, a lift at the community pool, a ramp at the Veterans Hall. So just many, many projects. Uh, uh, the Rotary Clubs of Carpentry have always been a super partner with the city. How about you, Eric? A little well, bit of history on Rotary. Um, I started, as I said earlier, I, I joined the Goleta Rotary Club. At that time, there was only one. Uh, today, there are two, uh, the Noontime Club and the Evening Club. I joined the Evening Club in 1986, was brought in by my next door neighbor where my business was located, Jim Smith, James Smith, I don't know if you know him. Still in the club today. Wow, yeah. um, 
And, uh, you know, I, the funny thing is, is that uh, as a new business person, as an entrepreneur, it's all about business. You're trying to figure out how to survive, how to grow, how to meet the next payroll, those kind of things. So I joined Rotary purely for selfish reasons. <laughs> It was, no doubt about it. It was like, I'm going to find a networking opportunity. I'm going to meet people in the business community. Um, and uh, it was amazing how quickly that changed from what you do in Rotary, that the reality is you go there and you serve. Um, you, you do what uh, Rotarians do, and all the rest of the things flow naturally. Um, the folks who probably don't last in it, it is think that it's about business first. It's about service first, mm -hmm. and um, the business aspects flow from that. And we do business with each other. We help each other out. We, in some respects, the Rotary Club has been a, a board of directors for me and my company. But I did get to serve as president, and in our club, you move up to the presidency relatively quick. I think I served 8990 <laughs> as president quick. of the club. <laughs> yeah, it, it happened quick, which, of course, is a wonderful experience because you don't know Rotary as well as you're going to know it until you've served as a president of your club. You know, getting better in touch with the district, um, knowing the bigger picture, and of course working through some of the issues that come with the club presidency. Had some other roles in the club through the year, you know, serving on committees and, and uh, chair, you know, committee chairs and those kind of things. Um, so uh, Rotary has been instrumental not just from the business perspective, but uh, obviously from the personal uh, side of things, the growth. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, how about um, public service, through public service? Eric, I'll go with you first on this one. Um, tell us a little bit about you yourself and uh, how you got involved with uh, being a public servant. Uh, well, I, I served on the Goleta City Council, was elected in 2006. Um, we started right away that December of 2006, served till 2010. Um, the last year, I was the appointed mayor. Uh, you guys do the same thing in Carpinteria, appoint a mayor, or do you uh, elect? We, we, we appoint. appoint. Yeah, yeah, so I got uh, appointed mayor my last year on the council um, and got to serve in that role. Um, I'm currently on the planning commission. I took a little mm -hmm. time off, and then uh, one of the gentlemen who was elected asked me to serve on the planning commission. Um, but I it's interesting how, you know, how do you get into it? Well, there's, there's something that motivates you. Wade, you've gone through it. You know that um, in our case, we had um, the founders of our new city who had a very specific focus on what they were trying to accomplish to the city, for the city. And that was really about land use, growth control, those kind of things. And it kind of conflicted with the bigger picture about what we thought the city should be or become. Um, and turns out we couldn't change the attitude of the people who were doing it, so we had to change the people. And I think I might have missed a meeting <laughs> um, and got nominated <laughs> to get into that role. But um, that being said, it was a wonderful, a wonderful experience, uh, another uh, incredible growth experience. Um, and it, what's interesting is how often um, the four-way test was part of my decision-making process. Very true. Um, you know, people come oftentimes to the public service with an agenda, and you realize very quickly when you get there that you have to act judicially, if you will. You know, um, your decision-making can't be just about what you think is right. Um, you really have to weigh the facts, the information, and uh, come to a decision that's beneficial to all concerned. Mm -hmm. you know? Very good. That's very true, which is uh, also interesting because Rotary specifically states uh, as, as part of its guiding principles, there'll be no politics in Rotary nor, nor uh, religious uh, persuasions, I would say, specific. Yeah. So that's why I, I believe you and I are fairly unique in that point that we're not supposed to be politicians or get involved with politics. So we have the four-way test right behind me. That is a good example of how it works out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dave, how about you? Tell us about your uh, public service. Mm. Well, um, I got interested in land use planning in school. And so uh, talking to a professor, he said, hey, go out around the Riverside area and here's some growing areas that you might be interested in putting out your resume and contacting these folks. He gave me the name of planning directors in the region. Um, at the time, I wasn't too sure exactly what the planning field was all about. But, um, 
uh, got an internship first out in Cathedral City and then was hired on there uh, um, in, in a temporary role and ultimately as a planner there. So it was very interesting. It was a young city at the time uh, and it had just incorporated in 1981 and this was about 1985. So they were brand new and they were growing like crazy. In 1986, it was the fastest growing uh, city in the state. They had a very small staff, so I got to do everything from soup to nuts there. Really learn about uh, the field, learn the job, and also work with the community. There was a lot of uh, active people in that community. It was a brand new city, so they were very motivated. And I had a chance to influence that. And it's, it, like many cities that incorporate, I'm sure Goleta was the same. They're interested usually in uh, improved law enforcement services and always in more control over local land use planning decisions uh, to uh, uh, set out what the future of the community is going to be like. So that was super fun to me, uh, and uh, I've, enjo I've always enjoyed that aspect of the work. Now I'd, I've stepped uh, back from that a little bit, uh, looking at the overall administration of the city, but I still enjoy the land use planning stuff. And I didn't realize until later in life, uh, my dad uh, was an Imagineer for Disney. He's retired, and as a youth, we went to Florida where he was working on Disney World at the time. And I never thought about the parallels until I was an adult and had gotten into the career. He said, you know, I'm kind of doing something similar to what my, uh, my father did for much of his career, which is uh, also fun. That's great. Um, tell us a little bit about, I would say, um, on the job, the most challenging uh, project you had to deal with, something that took a lot of time for you that was controversial and something that you had to overcome, and how possibly Rotary fit into that process. Yeah, I don't know if any one thing stands out. Um, there, uh, there in local government, there's always um, uh, uh, policy issues and policy discussions where there's at least two sides and sometimes uh, many more sides to an issue. Uh, and uh, there's tension. There's uh, tension in, in uh, the community over that. And you're put in a role, a, a judicial role for the decision makers at the policy level and a role of facilitating at the staff level, facilitating the council's interest, facilitating the community's interest, bringing those together and trying to come to a good decision. And um, I think, uh, uh, you know, where, where Rotary helps is being out there in the community and getting to know people in a different context other than my official role. So this is, uh, this is really important in that you get to know people, uh, you develop relationships with them, goodwill, friendship, so that when it comes to times where there's something that's contentious that's before the city, somebody has a complaint, there's an issue that you need to sort out, you've built up that uh, goodwill, you have something to build on. We're not, you and I aren't meeting cold, we're meeting uh, as, as friends or as people that know each other that can work on a problem without uh, any, any, any baggage or any distractions. Very good. Well, I know one of the projects we worked together on before you were city manager was the, uh, the freeway expansion, the first round, the one that actually didn't go through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I found that was pretty fascinating. It was great working with you, by the way, at, on that project. I found uh, at that time you and I worked well together, and I really appreciated the level-headedness that you had working with and through the process because we had, I would say, the state looking at their best interests. Locally, we were looking at our best interests. We had to go into Santa Barbara, then into Goleta, all the way from the county line. So working with all of the multiple different jurisdictions was uh, quite fascinating, and I, I'd say you did an outstanding job of that one. No, thank you, Wade. Yeah. Uh, it, these are, are, are difficult and complex projects, you can imagine. They're, and they're once-in-a-lifetime projects. Right. Now that we're seeing the freeway projects uh, uh, come to fruition uh, slowly but surely, <laughs> uh, the Carpinteria Council just approved the, the permit for the Linda uh, Casitas interchange replacements, uh, you really can understand the complexity of that and working through the different agencies. And that r really requires, to reiterate the point I made before, um, the entire community to feel comfortable and feel confident with those decisions and, and I think uh, you know, the, the relationships you build through in part Rotary and other relationships in the community sure. are, uh, are critical to moving those kinds of complex issues forward. Right. Thank you. How about you, Eric? One of those challenges you faced? Um, well, the, I, a couple of them come to mind, right. but even before that you mentioned the, the tension in the public process that exists and, uh, you know, at, being in Rotary for a long period of time and then um, serving an elected position, what became evident to me was that, you know, in nonprofits, and particularly in Rotary, 
we all are trying to get to the same thing, right? We're trying to get the same outcome. We have different ideas of how we should get there. You know, what resources we should use, who should be in charge of it, all these other different kinds of things, but we're all trying to do the same thing. Um, then you go into a public, uh, to an elected thing, and you actually realize that the competition is about people who want to do exactly the opposite. <laughs> Right? I mean, there's a good people that are intelligent and well thought out, and yet they come to exact opposite conclusions about what would be the best outcome. That's kind of surprising. <laughs> you know, uh, from a business perspective, you have the same thing. You're trying to work towards the same goal. So a huge learning curve and an adjustment. A couple of things that uh, I experienced. One of them was when, we, uh, when I first got elected in 2006, the general plan for our new city had just been adopted, I think, in August of 2006. And had been, they'd been working on it for years. And the general plan, the adoption of that general plan was very contentious because some people didn't like what was in it. There was inconsistencies. There was conflicts uh, within that. Um, so the first thing we did as a city council was open up that general plan and say, the newly adopted general plan say, okay, what do we need to do to change it? We had three new people come on board for a five-person council. The majority changed. Let's look at that general plan. And um, very contentious. Um, a lot of difficulties with that, change in who was on the council, opening that plan up that took years to get in place. And the good thing is we came to the idea of, okay, anybody who wants to tell us what they think should be changed, you tell us. We're going to make the list, and then we're going to go through that list. Mm -hmm. And so we started from a very open, um, transparent process um, and, you know, didn't say we're going to lean one way or the other. It's like, okay, let's first of all, let's all make the list. It doesn't matter who you are, what you think. We're going to be totally opposite, so we still get on the list. And we, then we worked through from there, bringing it down to a, a manageable number of amendments to the general plan. Another one that was uh, also very interesting was um, on the Planning Commission just a few years ago, um, we had uh, the local McDonald's at the Camino Real Marketplace wanted to have a drive through In fact, they originally designed it with a drive through always wanted to have a drive through but in the original rounds it was contested. They decided to wait, finally brought it back a couple years ago and, you know, it looked like a totally viable idea, it was in the right zoning district, everything seemed to fit. But when the, came, the hearing came to the uh, planning commission, we had the most overwhelming turnout <laughs> of people, um, and predom not predominant, but a lot of them against it. And we had people coming out of the woodwork, like a past county supervisor and a variety of other people saying, we don't, they should not have this drive through. Anyway, that was a very difficult, I won't bore you with the <laughs> conclusions, but it was a, it was a very um, enlightening and difficult one because it seemed like on the face of it, how important is a drive, McDonald's drive through in our community? And then it turned out that from the participation um, and the adamancy that went through it, uh, it was very important <laughs> how it turned out, you know, one way or the other. So um, those were one couple of the difficult things. That was a good comment you made about the transparency about it and being able to see. I noticed one thing that um, a lot of in common with other Rotarians that also serve as uh, public servants is that transparency, the fairness. That seems to be the predominant focus of, of each Rotarian as they come forward. Um, have you seen that as one of the primary examples of what makes um, a good a good person filling that position for you? In the yeah. elected capacity? Exactly. Um, yeah, I would think it, uh, I, I think the fundamentals that we c all talk about as Rotarians do translate very well. You know, it, in that you, you set yourself aside um, and try to deal with the issue in, in front of you and try to have, and I shouldn't use the word try, because <laughs> I know Yoda says there is no try, right? <laughs> it's do or do not. Um, but you, you want to have an outcome that is positive. And sometimes that means a comp compromise sure. between these competing interests. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes you have to actually have one competing interest win or lose. Um, 
which I think is probably the more difficult one to come to. I would agree. Uh, there again, usually you'll base it on the best outcome for the majority, what works out best mm -hmm. in, in fairness to the entire group. So I, I see that. How about you, Dave? Have you experienced any of that? How Rotary works in with you as far as the transparency even at the uh, management level? Oh, absolutely. I think it's, it's interesting uh, it with city management ethics, public agency management ethics, and the law aligns so well with uh, kind of the four-way yeah, test true. in terms yeah. of things like transparency and goodwill and this, and this kind of thing. That, and the equitable uh, distribution of resources in some ways, right? That's a big part of local government is ensuring that uh, our resources, our services are delivered to everybody in the community in a fair and equitable way. And Rotary certainly encourages that in a way that uh, it works uh, with the community. So. Uh, and of course, there's all kinds of laws that talk about transparency. We work in a very transparent business in, in local government, uh, from the way we conduct our business in public meetings, uh, making sure that all the information is available to the public, um, public records acts, uh, act requirements that ensure that anybody can come in at any time and see records and files and budget information. We have public committees where we develop uh, recommendations. So it's all a very public and transparent project. And that echoes, is echoed really in what Rotary is all about, being very transparent in the way they do business. Um, you know, another similarity, interestingly, about Rotary is it's a bottom up organization. As you know, it values. Um, the individual member and the club. So the business of Rotary gets done at the club level. You're out in the community, right. you understand the needs of the community, and you implement that through club service projects. It's not at all top down. And that, that's reflected, interestingly, in, in local government, which in the United States is the same way. We deliver services. The closest government to the people is local government, county and city services. And we deliver those directly to the people. So that's where people get engaged in government, participate in government, is at the local level. Similarly with Rotary, it's at the club level. So I find those parallels really interesting from transparency to just the way the, the organizations work. Very good. Thank you. Um, Eric, question for you. On the... Uh, well, s serving um, city council as an example, or even planning commission, what project or event did you do with Rotary that was actually a part of that, that you were able to coordinate the two efforts together? So I know um, you work with the other club doing, for example, a 4th of July celebration. Um, that's, a, that's a good example. Thank you for helping me with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's big. <laughs> uh, but we do an annual um, event uh, out at uh, Gersh Park in Goleta. And that's where the Rotary Clubs, the two Rotary Clubs of Galita, put on a fireworks show. And we include some entertainment and uh, games and things beforehand, so make it a kind of an all-day event. And um, the city has been very good in that process. Uh, we all agreed, um, and this was actually founded by the Noon Rotary Club years before even my club got involved. <laughs> um, and the idea was we wanted to bring that type of, of an event to our community, something that uh, could be family uh, first, friendly, safe, um, and close to home. You know, because our, our alternative was to go downtown uh, to uh, that um, venue, which of course is much bigger and a whole different atmosphere. Um, so the city's support has been um, from that same perspective. Right. They're saying, Yes, we, we want to have this kind of event in our community, and we uh, believe in that process. Like our event is no alcohol uh, allowed, family friendly. In fact, we always have a sponsor who pays for the kids to get in and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And with that cooperative arrangement, the city gives us a little bit of the funding, but then they supply us some law enforcement um, support and those kind of things that um, we don't have to pay for. We actually make it into a fundraiser for the clubs. Um, of course, that money is reinvested right back right. into the community. So um, it is a win-win situation. Um, really, I think as close as we get um, with the city as a Rotary Club is, is really dealing with something that would be youth-oriented or recreationally oriented. Um, Rotarians quite often come and appear um, at the council, but not as Rotarians, as individuals. As, as you said, sure. uh, we don't really uh, discuss politics in the club. I shouldn't say we don't. Sometimes we do discuss <laughs> it, but we're not representing a position that the club should take. Uh, we're discussing it among ourselves. And so um, 
the club itself has really looked for opportunities where they're augmenting the city or the city is augmenting us. Very good. How about you, Dave? Any examples of that? I know um, the Tamal Park was, was one example, and we had a, I think our, our largest district conference ever was in Carpinteria also. I, th I think as Eric said, uh, you know, it, it's worked both ways where the city has come to the Rotary Clubs and say, hey, we have a need, can you help us? And, it, and where Rotary's come to the city and say, hey, we're looking for a good service project. Um, where's there some opportunities? Tomo Park uh, was an example of, uh, I think, both coming together. So the city had some needs in a particular neighborhood, particular part of town that, were being, that weren't being met in terms of parks and recreation space, active recreation space, especially for young kids. Uh, the Rotary Club was looking for a, uh, uh, a, uh, a project. Uh, in particular, they had looked at the Kids World project in Santa Barbara and thought, hey, that's a good model. We'll explore that here. They even had the fellow from Texas come out and did the Kids World. New York. Uh, Actually, New York. New York, yeah. New York yeah. he, he came out and he'd, maybe he had done a project in Texas. Uh, yeah, but, that's true, uh, he did. Uh, uh, he came out to Carpinteria, he talked to some school kids, he got some ideas about the project, and he pitched it, and it uh, looked like that was going to go. Then we decided where we, were, uh, we said had to find a spot for it, and it turned out that the Linden Field area there, um, uh, as you know, uh, was the location for it. Well, that was on old state park property, and so it went through a process where the idea was it really should be an interpretive uh, play area based on the legend of the Rainbow Bridge and the Chumash culture and it evolved from there and that was a very collaborative process with the state parks, with the city, with the Rotarians who were all open to finding a solution and ultimately getting that park built and now meets a great need down in that neighborhood for mm -hmm. uh, uh, kids and the, the public. So th I think that's a good example. The other one is the uh, accessibility improvement projects from a number of years ago uh, that the Rotary Club took, uh, both Rotary Clubs took on. This was where the city had done, uh, had been audited and uh, identified a whole bunch of improvements that needed to be done to improve accessibility in the town. A lot of our public improvements were older, a lot of our buildings were older, and there was a need to make improvements to improve access for all, all the folks in town. Um, Rotary stepped up and said, tell us what they are and we'll meet them. And as I mentioned before, we got improvements at the community pool for access. We got community uh, buildings that, uh, where we had ramps and other accessibility improvements put in, all with the great help of the Rotary Clubs. That's great. That's outstanding. Well, we're kind of running out of time. So I would first of all like to thank both of you for your outstanding service to your communities. And it, as a good reflection and example for Rotary and Rotarians, uh, thank you both for all that you do. With that, we will see you next time um, when we bring forward something else uh, new and exciting that Rotary is doing. With that, thank you. We'll see you at the next one.